What's up, guys? Welcome to season two of The Warner House. Woo! Yeah, we're obviously very excited to be here. Mm. It has been a long time coming. We haven't talked to you guys in, it's been a minute. It's been about six months. <laughs> but we have, I mean, obviously so much to catch you guys up on. We've been living a lot of life. A lot of big things have happened, mm -hmm. but we're so excited. I know everyone on our social medias were like, you know, when are we going to hear from you guys? When's the so Warner House going to be back? And we're finally here. We're finally here. And man, does it feel great. Um, you know, the podcast, I feel like in season one was, it was fun. It, it was it was something to get used to, obviously. You know, there was weeks where it was like, oh, we're going through a, a three-game losing streak. Like that this is not that much, though. This is not good. I don't want to do a podcast. But hey, listen, overall, I thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. And of course, I get to do it with, the most gorgeous human being on the planet. Oh, wow. Thank my beautiful, stunning wife. Thank you. Who looks amazing tonight. Oh, thanks. Um, how are you feeling tonight, honey? I'm feeling good. I'm excited um, that we're back. We have so much to catch everyone up on. I feel like it's going to take a while for everyone to get, you know, <sighs> together. But we're mm -hmm. excited. We have football. We have family coming up. Mm -hmm. We have the baby, Bo mm. Anthony, beautiful Warner. Our Boy. life, our dynamic has changed a lot since the last time we've talked to you guys. Yeah, there's a lot to catch people up on, but let's just kind of get, you know, the new folks who are there watching us right now. Of what, course, because we probably have a lot of new listeners. You never know. Because there might be one or two. Or one or two are no, like, who are lot. these people? There's a lot. There's like one or two or three that who are like, who are these people? So let's give them a little rundown of, you know, our little, our little short journey. This oh. is Fred. This is my husband. He plays oh. for the San Francisco 49ers. Mm -hmm. And he's a pretty dang good, you know, linebacker. Thank you, honey. Um, he had a pretty amazing game last night, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> um, I do want to mention that it is Victory Tuesday here in the Warner House. We have been married for how long we've we been married for, honey? Two years. Two years. We have a beautiful baby boy who's six passed months the, old. Passed the test. Um, we met the modern way. We met through <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> Um, via The Bachelor. I was on a show called The Bachelor on ABC, season mm -hmm. 24. Mm. Um, wow. And you know what? It's the, the stars just aligned for us. The stars aligned. And everybody, you know, has their match and I met mine. Boy. And we are just living the dream, honestly. Yeah. We're in love, as you can see. <laughs> Picture perfect. Everything's amazing. No, absolutely not. Nothing is perfect. <laughs> no, you don't want to sell Not absolutely that. not. No, because you don't want to have things. It is perfect, but like, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, we're not going to be the. Like, we. On, um, kidding me? Yeah. So that's, that's a pretty good run, John. Yeah. No, I think what to expect, right? What, 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 what do we want to get out of the pod this season, season two? And, you know, I think last season we had obviously a lot of in-depth conversations about the game, play by play. You know, there'll still be plenty of that, but. You know, I think it'll be important to kind of let people in on what 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 do Fred and Sydney do? Yeah. When is when, like because you know they see me and they see me in the five four the jersey the helmet acting crazy yada yada. All right, that's cool. Let's 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 kind of let's kind of you know dig deep into what our day to day looks like, our right. family life. Yeah. I think a lot of people can connect to you know what how we live our life. And I think Very a simple. People, a lot of people did connect to us in that way. I think that's why we were successful in our first season because yeah, of course everyone likes to hear about the football side of things and you know, we can just talk about that, you know, all the time, but I think a lot and lot a lot of our fans and you know, new listeners and fans really latch on to just like our relationship, our life, our, you know, little quirks that we have. Quirky. <laughs> And of course, like the baby will be an, a, an amazing addition of conversation. But I mm -hmm. think that's what, you know, we're most successful at. Of course, we're going to have guests. We're going to talk football. Don't you worry. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that why this has been so successful is because we are just ourselves and we talk about our life. And, um, you know, that's interesting. And I love that. Keep it simple. Yeah. Keep yeah. it simple. Yeah. Speaking of football, uh, we have a little bit of a, a video here, I guess, from... Monday night's game. Oh, what was it? Monday night, we uh, we just played the New York Jets. <laughs> Did you forget? And uh, it's already behind me, obviously. <laughs> you know, I already forgot. So, uh, you know, there's this little clip going around, a little viral clip of me in pregame, honey. And so I want you to kind of, I guess, watch this and see how, how big of a psychopath I am. And then we can talk about oh, the differences gosh. between <laughs> me, me on game day and then me at home. So... Bring it in tight. I need dogs. I need dogs. Hey, laser focus. Laser focus. 
Four quarters. Four quarters. Execution. Execution. Y'all know we're in business. Oh, oh heavens. Uh -huh. They gotta be to do this. We think that the you. Show these boys. They don't believe I'm belonging to I can hardly put it together with all the all the, the bleep, 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 bleep. Oh my goodness! Well, oh, I, I feel so bad for my mom nap watching after that. that. Holy cow! I need some a bar of soap. Literally. Wash my mouth. Okay, so that what was that? Like that was just what you <laughs> you just like hype up the team before you, the beginning of the game. Obviously. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Yeah, honey, that was me trying to hype my guys up. Okay. To go out to war. And obviously, you go into like a different mode when you do that. That's because correct. that's not the Fred Warner that I know. Really? And I don't want to know that guy. That's not for me to know. Why not? What do you mean? Like, what do you? What guy do you know? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking. Like, not say, him. Like, well, like the aggressive, like, mm, um, you know, just cursing like, up a storm, guy. nuts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Like, obviously, you're not him when you're. In the Warner house, mm. you're just him when you, you know, you're on the field. Right. So that just gets you, I guess, the team going. It's good that they, you like, so you're the person they call whenever we need to, like, rally the troops and get everyone, like, in a good mindset. I guess you could say Do that. Do you ever, I mean. like, uh, like, like, have others, like, or someone that may, like, um, I know exactly what you're trying to say. Possibly? Yes. And so that's a good question. There's different there's different speeches that has to be given. It's kind of crazy. Like there's literally multiple speeches that have to be given within a, a pregame, mm -hmm. right? You have your huddle breakdown that you just saw with me. Then you have, we all go back inside after that little warm up. Kyle, we have our team prayer. Kyle kind of says his two piece. And then you have oh, another you pray speech. after that. That's interesting. <laughs> I repent. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, prayer, Kyle talks. Then you have another speech. Okay. So then another guy has to get that. Usually yeah. Trent Williams. All right. Trent Williams comes in, veteran, mm -hmm. Hall of Famer. Guys listen. You know what I mean? You're gonna listen to Trent Williams. Boom. He 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 sets the stage there. Um, there's also another speech that I have to give after we get done with our our first warm-up. Mm -hmm. so lots of speeches. All right, lots of speeches. So <laughs> you can imagine that sometimes the, the the content of the speeches can get a little get a little dry sometimes. Okay. But as long as it's coming from the heart. That's all that matters. That's all what the guys and connect with. And you enjoy with. doing that for them, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's like it brings you guys together, right? Makes it you closer. brings us together. It gets me in the right mindset to know where I need to get to. Because you flip that switch, right? Boy, do I. <laughs> yeah. Boy, do I. <laughs> yeah. And that's the crazy part when I think about I don't want to go too in-depth about it, but that's it's the crazy like, part when I think about like when the, when the, the game, like when I'm, when I'm done playing. Mm hmm and like, I mean, there's going to be no reason for me to act like that ever again. Like, <laughs> there's maybe, only <laughs> maybe if you're coaching a little Pop Warner and you no, really no, no. get it out of him. No, 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 no. I'll scare speech? them little kids. Yeah, I'll scare them little kids. But there will never be a reason for me to act like that again. So it'll kind of be weird. Like, hmm, I wonder if like, will I, will I yearn for that? It's there. And if it needs to come out, it will. You know that you've got it deep in your core. <laughs> Oh, it's in there. Yeah. It ain't it ain't on you. It's in you. Well, I think it, whatever you said, because uh, I couldn't really tell what you were saying. Just yeah. Because it was mostly bleeped out. But whatever it was, it, it did a good job because we came out with the W. We sure did. And that's all that matters. Totally. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Thank you, honey. So should we uh, take a little rewind back down memory lane of this past off season? Yeah. We've got a lot of catching up to do. So I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. Well, I think the last season we stopped. Um, we our last episode was a few weeks before the Super Bowl because you know we you really wanted to like take those last um, two games I think before the Super Bowl to really focus and then obviously that time off before we headed to Vegas. Um, so it's been a while. I was in my third trimester of pregnancy. We're just rolling hot, you know, with winning game after game. Um, and we were getting ready to go to Vegas. And what was your mindset like at that point? Yeah, I mean, my mindset was obviously I'm trying to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm trying to win a ring while trying to obviously be there for my beautiful wife right. the who's nine was, months pregnant. I was crashing at that point. Yeah. He was going through it a little bit. Yes. And so I'm, you know, I'm having to obviously, you know, juggle both <laughs> priorities. <laughs> okay. My wife, of course, is number one. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, it just it didn't go our way. It didn't go our way, and you know I've already spoke on it plenty of times, and I'm way past it now. It stays with you forever, but um, yeah, it was it was rough. 
Yeah. It was rough. It was a rough outing. But we'll be back. You know what? Like honestly, what I take back from just the game and after the game, the game was just like a blur. It felt like it was only like twenty minutes long to me, at least as a viewer. Mm-hmm. And then um after that last second, you know, when we lost, it was just like immediate I because it would have been like what three months really of me kind of like you know visioning us at the super bowl and like i was mentally preparing myself for that and then once it was over like all of that build up was just at that, that second it was over i was like okay like that's it we're done mm-hmm. now i'm focusing on having this baby mm-hmm. and like you know our family like the next huge giant thing mm-hmm. and i don't know i will say i don't know if we didn't have such a big event in our life happening if i think both of us couldn't have been able to just like switch it off so fast and mm-hmm. be like okay we got to focus on this mm-hmm. Kobe, it's the biggest moment of our life having mm-hmm. our baby but i think if we didn't have such a big momentous moment about to happen it would have lingered a little bit longer i think mm-hmm. um but also i say like with you because i met you me, me and fred met actually right a few weeks after his first super bowl appearance and you know we talked a little bit about that and how, you know, you dealt with that. And I think this time around, unfortunately, same result, but a diff we do, you know, you just, you, you grow and you, you learn to just like, okay, like on to the next, you know, what, what can you do? What can you do? You can't really dwell on it. That's for sure. Um, you just got to learn from, you know, totally. take the lessons as you learn from a loss and you got to move forward with it. So yeah, I mean, it is what it is. We're on to the next and we started off one and oh. Yeah. This year, that's all we're worried about is going one and zero every week. But yeah, looking back at that game, like uh, or that time, that season of life is like, all right, you know, people talk about going on, you know, baby moons and all this sort of thing, and I'm like, there was no time for any baby moons. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get that. If we had a baby moon, where would you want to go, honey? Remember, I think I wanted. Where did I want to go? I wanted to go to somewhere tropical like Bora Bora or oh, Hawaii. That's what I wanted. I thought baby moons are like quick trips, like quick flights since you're so pregnant. But here's Bora Bora is like Remember, a 17-hour we situation. Had, we had this conversation. Okay. I went to the, my doctor. She mm-hmm. said, Sydney, we know that this that, – listen, this baby is breached. Okay? Like we mm-hmm. know that we're probably going to have to have Breach a meaning heads – Head, head down, feet spread out. It's head up. Not, I'm sorry. Head up. Yes. <laughs> It just it wasn't going to happen the way that right. I envisioned it. So right. we had already, you know, I was still trying every single day to flip the baby around. By the way, when I first heard the word breached, I'm thinking the head's already coming out. <laughs> Fred, don't be ridiculous. I just wanted to throw that in there. That's all I wanted to say. You thought I was just casually calling you, hey, babe. No, 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 no. Listen, breached. when you hear the word breach, it's like breach the surface. No? No. Well, I guess. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, okay. And all of that to say... I was Quick cleared trip. to go on a honey uh, on, on a honeymoon on a baby moon, but Fred Warner doesn't like to fly during the season unless it's for a game. By week, you won't catch us flying anywhere. Um, any situation whatsoever, Fred Warner's not getting on a plane unless he's going to a game. Period. Which, but I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. Listen, that. listen, listen, that listen. Doesn't listen. Make any sense. First of all, that's not that's not completely true. Like, all right, in the given cir- if if the circumstance is right and it's a short enough flight, then okay, like we can talk about Red it. But Warner, but not- listen, so listen, listen. But here's the reasoning. Had. Here's the reasoning, though. Flights create inflammation in the body, and then during the season, what's what's the thing that you got to lessen in the body? Inflammation, mm-hmm. right? That was the, that's the only reasoning behind <laughs> that, babe. But um. Uh yeah, so yeah, no honeymoon or a baby moon, whatever you want to call it. No, and, no, no, it's fine. Honestly, it's fine. I was just large. I mean, technically, we could have taken one after the Super Bowl, but uh, you're not supposed to fly when you're nine months, ten months pregnant. Correct. And I, I didn't want, I didn't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for what? So no, no baby moon. It's okay. Maybe for the next one. Actually, probably heck no, because who's gonna keep my other baby? I'm not mm. gonna just leave my other baby. Mm. Yeah. So um, no, yeah. Um, so then after we got home from Vegas, it was basically just hit the ground running on getting the nursery finished, mm. going to my last little, um, you know, doctor's appointments, making sure everything was the same. Just a lot of the same, honestly. Mm-hmm. We just got back to normal life and everything was slower. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were just counting down the days until I gave birth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I remember, I remember the to-do list of setting the crib up. 
doing all the little things. The drapes, the crib. Like, I, when, let me tell you something. When I have you, whenever the season's over, oh my God, I'm like, oh gosh, I have a list of things. Okay, I need to do this, 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 this. And it's just like house stuff, just things that I would like to do together because I wanted us to do the crib together. I wanted us to, you know, do all those like little things together. I think I it's sweet to do. And I'm mm -hmm. thankful that we were able to do those things because mm -hmm. um, we planned out the pregnancy like perfect whenever I got pregnant and like whenever we were going to deliver, it worked out really well. So, um, yeah. And then we couple blinked and it was March, uh, March 7th. And we had our little boy. Yeah, we uh, it was a it was a scheduled C-section. I remember uh, we I specifically wanted to make sure I was like recording you know, the day of, you know, we get up, what, five in the morning, turn the phone on, you know, and do a little video of, yeah, all right, Fred this is, this is our day, like you know, you know, like a little documentary, a little, you know what I'm saying, of, and of I'm the so day. I'm so glad that you did that because I was in no way, shape, or form wanting to like, of course. look at myself right. at all. Right. So I'm glad you did that. You know, and I, you know, I remember pulling the phone. I'm like, all right, babe, this is the day. Like, do you, what, what are your thoughts? I was drinking like, my drink because you have to drink this drink before you have a C section. You have to drink this horrible, like, Ooh, it's so sick. This drink is so big before you go into the OR or you go into the hospital. And I was drinking my drink and I was like gagging as I'm drinking my drink. That's great. I remember I had to like scrub myself down with those, all that stuff. Yes. It was a long, monotonous process you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Not fun. And then I remember doing the video mm -hmm. and I'm like, all right, babe, like, what are your thoughts on the day? Like, are you excited? She's like, um, I hope I just come out on the other side and I'm like, oh, great. We're, yeah, we're off to a hot start, guys. No, you know, great start to the day. You know, her mind's in the right spot. So, I, just, I said, I hope I just, I hope I'm here to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, you're just already in the perfect spot me mentally. But, um, but no, I mean, you you know, you, you kind of, you tried to, you tried to hold on with the confidence of like the cool cucumber, oh cool as a gosh. cucumber. Listen, but the thing is, I woke know. up and like, you don't, under, like you wake up, okay, like I'm having my baby today. All right, well, let's just get, I'm going through the motions. I'm getting my stuff together. We get in the car. We're driving there. It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Everything's cool. And then we get there and it's just so wild, like what I went through and like the steps up to that. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Like, okay, we are just go have a baby. And then you get in the OR and we, so with my C-section, I had to like, like actually after they get me hooked up with all my stuff i had to just physically just walk into where and just lay on a table and just be like okay cut me wide open like and you're fully coherent and i'm just like oh, this is just like a lot this is a lot so it all right before we had to take the walk to the or before i laid down i had a little bit of an, a, like an anxiety attack um and the nurses were just all holding hands and i was like oh, okay like oh, okay but that was the only and then i just was like there's no like there's no getting out of this like this has to happen so i just need to like take a breath and then i was like okay like i got it out let's let's do this um we walked back i sat down they gave me my spinal that was not oh my gosh that was that was the thing i always think i was most nervous about to, to get the spinal it was literally nothing i couldn't even feel one thing it was like a little like somebody pricking your skin, Prickle the skin. i lay down i was numb to my neck down mm -hmm. and they i didn't feel a thing they did their business and two minutes later i hear my baby crying and i was like it's just the craziest thing and then he came out seven pounds 11 ounces seven pounds or two seven ounces. oh wow yeah not 11 ounces not he was, 11, he was a little tight seven two seven pounds two ounces i guess um, wishful thinking seven eleven <laughs> no seven two is perfect per perfect Fred size. comes from a family of large babies his mother has had three kids and all of her kids were 10 pounds and up. I don't have the stature to carry a 10 pound baby. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he was seven two, came out with blue or he black eyes. He has plenty of weight now. Yeah, so now he's in like the 99th percentile of every weight chart, length chart. He's the biggest baby every time anyone sees him, they're like, mm -hmm. are you kidding? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he was just, came out kicking and screaming he came out immediately we were like oh my god like he's my twin <laughs> he's Can't got lie. mom's lips mom's eyes mom's cheeks mom's everything so Ooh. that was an amazing um thing to see and then i mean i could go on and on about that day. yeah i mean that first night i think it was just kind of 
there's no there's no handbook on like all right how do you do this you know what i'm saying you have to kind of figure out how to change a diaper for the first time you know what i'm saying obviously you're learning how to feed him and like it's just like but it was it was so insane like from my standpoint to watch you and like that complete just like motherly instinct take over yeah. you know because you obviously were you know you had your reservations about how it was going to be being a mom and all this other, other types of things nervous. nervousness which is completely natural normal things and then for him to you know to come and then like just see you completely just like take over and like whoa and when they say you have that mother it's just it's it's instant as soon mm -hmm. as they put him on my chest mm -hmm. i was like okay i need to feed my baby mm -hmm. and then you just do it and mm -hmm. then it's just like there's no like there's no way to learn it just it truly just immediately happens yeah. and um it was like the most beautiful experience with breastfeeding and our time at the hospital and bringing him home to meet our family and just it was you know we could literally just dedicate a whole episode to that i won't get too in depth with it but it was the best days hands down in my life mm -hmm. and i like i i could relive it a thousand times mm -hmm. um but yeah ever since then i mean his first night just those sleepless nights uh those sleepless months him just learning you know how to live in the real world and us figuring out how to take care of an infant um were interesting that was pretty much our entire off season was just figuring out how to be parents mm -hmm. for sure um i feel like now i would uh, everyone asked me like okay like how are you feeling like with motherhood and where are you at and i'm like last month he was five months and i was like i now i've got it like now i don't question myself i don't question his like i know him so well i know his schedule i know everything about him of course things are going to change and he's going to evolve as he grows up but i'm good like as a mother I feel really, you know, secure in what I'm doing and he's happy and mm -hmm. healthy and growing and thriving. And yeah, I would say to any new mom, definitely it takes for me, it took five months for me to feel like, okay, I've got this. I've got it. No. Oh. And I feel good about it. Oh, you've got it. Totally. <laughs> what about uh what do you what do you, what would you say like the like a funny story with uh with your baby boy? Like what's like the funniest thing you feel like he's you've like experience with him so far like a funny thing that he did or does or i don't know like is there something that is like specific that you feel like is there one that you think of i don't know i mean when i think of like i i feel like this the the time he's in right now like six months old is is like so fun because like he's finally starting to get like this little personality about him yes and like he has these little screams that he does like of excitement yes. you know and like and being able to play around with him, rough him up a little bit, he you know, that. like, yeah, he loves it. So, like, that, of course, as a dad, like, with your boy, you want to, <laughs> yeah. it's like, that's like the fun stuff to yeah, do. Yeah, I know. So. He's so, like, he loves being rough housed and flipped around by upside mm -hmm, down and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. He, I can just tell he's going to grow up to be like a rough him, tough him, like, mm -hmm crazy hey, boy that's um that's what he's supposed to be no i love that but i think in the beginning what was caught me off guard it was funny but also like just like having a boy like he just pees everywhere like mm -hmm. and then like when i'm putting him in the tub and he literally like poops mm. through my hand mm. and i'm like mm, it's mm, like, mm. <laughs> delicious <laughs> like, so, like stuff like oh, that was boy. crazy in the beginning i remember that one i remember like you you I undressed him i was upstairs you undressed like, him and then walked him over to the bath and he would literally within that it. time he did, seconds, he did his business he did his business on it you. was a whole bathroom and it situation. fell on the floor it fell on the floor, mm. fell on my hands everywhere. And I hear screaming and I run up there and I'm I'm, I'm seeing laughing. the massacre. I'm laughing, he's laughing. No, you weren't laughing. I wasn't laughing at that point. You were crying. I was not crying, Fred. You were crying. Don't be ridiculous. You're a, babe, get something, help. <laughs> not crying. It was, uh, it was, yeah, it was a moment for everyone involved. Yeah. Um, I feel like we've lived 20 lives since those days. But mm -hmm. yeah, those moments are really funny. Like, what did he do? Like, what are the, the big ones? Whatever he rolled over for the first time, that's of course, huge. Yeah, big time. Rolling over from the first front laugh. to back. Oh my god! The first smile. <sighs> yeah, yeah. This melts your heart. Melts your heart, and that's what I that's what I chase every day is just a little little giggle, a little smile. Yeah, it's not um, hard. It's not hard to you know not hard to get a smile. The laugh. You got work for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, no, he's like his mama. He's got to, <laughs> like, he is, you got to really be funny or I'm not going to give you, like, you know, you got to work for it a little you gotta bit. You got to work for a little bit? Yeah, he's not easily amused. And then the whole sleep thing is a, is a whole beast in itself. Like, I mean, before having a baby, I'm thinking, man, people who say they got to wake up three, four times in the night with the baby, I'm like, you obviously just don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That was That was me being naive, silly old me. Yeah. And then you have a baby and then they're literally telling you, like, no, you literally... 
you have to wake them up to feed them yes. initially. Yes. And so, I mean, luckily, you know, we had them in the off season and I'm, I'm able to be there and be very hands on with the, the nighttime stuff, being up in the middle of the night, feeding them. And, uh, boy, I, it's so crazy. Like how you forget about it so quickly. I now know. they, the fact that he sleep cause he sleeps through the night now, like he's perfect sleeper now, hopefully stays that way. You know, mom got him on a strict tight schedule, you know, yeah, so we're going to keep it like that. Tight. And so, but before it's like, you, you forget about the moments where it's like, all right, you feed them. And then you can't just plop them back down in the crib because they like they don't know how to soothe themselves to sleep yet. Well, the bur- you have to burp them constantly. Well, okay, you got to burp them, but what I'm saying is you got to rock them back to sleep. Of course, yes. Not of course, because yeah, now you don't have I forget, to do that. I forget. You see, you forgot already. I forget. It takes at least thirty minutes to get them back to sleep. You gotta, you gotta feed them, burp them, swaddle. Pro- you probably shouldn't feed them all the way either. You should probably leave a little something in the bottle after you. So after you swaddle them, you you, them you stick it back in. Yeah. You, you give them a little bit more. So hopefully the eyes start to get a little. Oh, okay, the eyes are closing. Then that's when you kind of you know light, light little light little. Okay, boom, and then you get them in the in the crib nice and light. Yeah. Because if you put them down too heavily, boom, they're awake and now you re- you should restart the whole oh process. They're screaming. I already forgot. You already forgot, but it's, it was. But it's constant. It's twenty. It was hours it was traumatic enough for me where I remember all these little <laughs> things. All right. So you know what I'm saying. So that that was the that was the off season. <laughs> but, but what I traded for anything, of course no, not. No, I wish we go back to the days where that was hard for sure. But like when I was nursing him, he would just fall asleep on my chest and we would just go to sleep. And that's beautiful. But listen, then on the other end, you know, when we have to transition him out of into his crib, it's like a lot. Listen, the mo- it's not even, listen, sleeping through the night, <laughs> game changer. All right, that's that's a game changer. Stuff. But what's more of the game changer in my mind is the part I was just talking about. The, Being able to put him in the crib, yeah. awake. Yeah, so right and, now- and then, and then, hey- He's gonna he's gonna handle he's gonna handle the rest. Right now, Bo, um, for all of his naps and his nighttime sleep and everything, he just we You put him just, in his we, little sleep. We put him in a sleep sack and he lay him in his mm-hmm. crib and he just talks or to me talks to himself and kind of looks around until he'll fall asleep within ten minutes. Mm-hmm. We're very blessed to have that kind of baby. Mm-hmm. There's no up and down. There's mm-hmm. no waking up in the middle of the night. He sleeps seven to seven. Mm. He takes two hour naps. Mm. He is an angel sent from heaven. <laughs> um and not everyone has that. So I just consider myself a blessed woman. Yeah, no, we're great. And, yeah, we're grateful um, for sure. And he's just a really perfect child. Yeah. But in the beginning, I think it's all the same. You got to get up. You got to feed. You got to do. You got to go through the dog days of, of new, that newborn stage. Yeah. But now he's fully sleep trained and we are living. And life. it happened. It happened at the perfect time, too, because like I was a little I was a little nervous given the fact that, you know, training camp was coming up and I'm like, all right, well, first of all, training camp, I'm off in a hotel. Yes. OK, so I'm. I'm going to get my sleep regardless. But anyway, I'm obviously worried about your mental health. You know, you being here with the baby alone. Yeah. And like, I wanted to make sure that he was, you know, at that point where he's going to be sleeping through the night. Yeah, because we really did it together 100%. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we fully, you were like fully partners in this. And I feel like that's why it was so successful. And Mm -hmm. I didn't expect anything less from you, honey, because we're such a good team. Oh, thank you, We killed it. We really did. I think we did. We did okay. I think we did great. No, we did great. I was just yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, I've I mean, how was that for you when I was, you know, away the for weeks, all the training camp? Because like I'm I'm coming home for like an hour a day, like at in the evening. Yeah. The week and then having to go back to the hotel. To training camp, I was a nervous wreck. That's all I could think about was like, okay, like he's about to be gone. Like he's about to be fully gone. Like it's all me, it's all me, it's all me, it's all me. I would think about it constantly. But I think once we just did it, he was only at that point in training camp, he was only getting up once a night. So it was fine. I expected to be up at three, give him um, a little bit of a bottle. He'll sleep until six. So that wasn't bad because he was because we had done so good during the the train. I'm um, sorry, off season mm-hmm. that we got him to a point where once you were leaving, I only had to get up once, and it was perfect. Um, so I feel like the fact that we just like were really good with it in the beginning months helped me out a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, once you had to leave, so that was that was really good. And then now look where we're at. You know, exactly. he sleeps through the night. Mm-hmm. So. Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess we can stop talking about that. Okay. Hey, we're talking about Listen, him all day we'll, long. Who we'll, cares? We'll always talk about him. There, who will all like throughout every episode. You guys just expect there's gonna be at least. Listen, that's what the people want to hear about. All right, they want to hear. They want to hear about the baby Bo. I know. So just this week, Bo turned six months, mm. 
And I think with that comes so much change. Like he's so different than like who he, like I just, I would look at, I looked at photos of like the day that he was born and it's like all the months coming up. Cause I did that post on my Instagram mm-hmm. of his evolution mm-hmm. since he was born mm-hmm. and his six month birthday. Mm-hmm. And oh my, I just like went down a rabbit hole, like through my phone of all the pictures. And I was just like crying, like not okay. Mm-hmm. Obviously looking through those and those, like he was just so, they're just so tiny when they're first born. You don't realize it. And they grow so big every day. But I mean, just like looking past, like through these past six months, like, I mean, like, I mean, there's every day I feel like mm-hmm. there's a moment where I'm just like, hey, how is this my baby? Like, I'm mm-hmm. so blessed. Like, it how never is gets this old. real life? I tell that to guys all the time, like, in the locker room, like, it just never gets old coming home and seeing him. And, like, never. <laughs> like, those my little favorite, small when I wake up, yeah. my eyes open when I'm waking up and I'm like, oh, my God, I get to see him in, like, I know. a few seconds. <laughs> like, I get to go in there and wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> it would be nice where she's like, I miss him. I kind of want to go wake him up. I'm like. Oh, heavens, like, here we, we just, go. I guess I, I, I want to go in hey, there and wake him up. Forgive me, you know, uh, husband and wife. Go wake the <laughs> no, baby honey, up. You know I love you. But no, 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 I'm just kidding. But anyway, I really enjoy, you know, we took him to the baseball game twice now. Oh, yeah. We took him when he was real, a little small nugget. We and then we him took him when he was this, like, what, two weeks old? No, no, no. Was it was it a month? We were we're not the we're not those parents. Okay. It was it was it was there was early though. He was I just went he was so tiny. He was small and yeah. people were looking at us kinda of crazy, like I don't know were if your baby really? should I don't know if your baby should be out here right was now. They really? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, who cares? You know, you bring your baby, whatever. Yeah. He was old enough. And then we brought him this past week. Yeah. You know, we went brought him to the Giants game and uh that was a fun that was a fun deal. Kind of just like actually like, you know, him he doesn't know what's going on, but like it's just, you can tell like he's actually like looking and like it, yeah. he's, you know he's looking and they're like oh what is this you know what I'm saying like there's some I sort really of like intrigue there. Taking him to like uh, the open practices during uh, oh my god preseason that was next level next level next level because like as a player you see it all the time you see guys with their families their kids running up you know you you see the pictures of guys holding their babies and stuff. And so, like, for me to have that moment with him, mm-hmm. you know, after a practice, like, just, like, be with them and, like, they, you know, the 49ers captured content with me and him, yeah. you taking pictures of us, and I'm, like... I remember you texted me whenever we left, and you were, like, I don't think you understand. Like, that was, like, I can't all cry, but all you were, like, mm-hmm. so happy. Like, mm-hmm. you were, like, that was, like, one of the best moments of my life, just mm-hmm. having him there, and I was, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But, I mean, what else? What else? I mean... Every single day, you guys, like I, like Fred was saying, like I want to wake him up in the middle of the night. That's how much I miss him. Like it's actually <laughs> insane how I am with how much I love this little boy. And uh, just- I mean, yeah, and we're we're talking about how great it is because it is great, but it also is like a complete life change as well. Like you know, because you 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 realize like how much time you kind of have to yourself. Mm-hmm. I guess after you have a child, you you realize how much like just. I don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you just well, downtime. Just- how much downtime you have to just do nothing? You know what I'm saying? Because like now, when you have a baby, there's no such thing as really like downtime. No. Aside from like, because when they're napping, you're having to do something. I was just like, telling produ- you the other day productive. about how like I look back the days before I had a son, and I'm just like the amount of things that I could have accomplished that I think about, oh my God, like I could have literally went to Harvard, had a medical degree. <laughs> wow, went to Harvard these No, days. but that's being dramatic, but like all the things that you can do during the day that you have no idea the time that you have until you have a baby mm-hmm. is incredible. Like now just me walking out of the house, I have to jump through 18 hoops. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's to get out of the house alone. Mm-hmm, like if I'm bringing mm-hmm. him with me, I know what I am allotted, how much time and what I can get done mm-hmm. um, if he's with me, but going, me having to do things alone, I have to jump through 18 hoops to be able to be able to get out of my house and accomplish those things that I can't do with him, um, which is, you know, it's an adjustment. But like I said, like, my life will never be the same, and I'm grateful for that. Like, I don't want it to be the same. I'm not the same person as I was six months ago. Mm-hmm. I never will be. And that's in the best, like, way possible. Yeah. Um, it's made me such a better person, a better human being. It's opened my eyes up to a lot in life. And it's just, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Mm-hmm. Hands down. Hands down. Moving on, Wad. Monday Night Football. I know we touched on a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, let's, let's just hear your recap of the game. Because I love to hear your insights sometimes. You know, I know you obviously, you're very well rehearsed in, uh, in football. 
mm-hmm. you know your stuff these days. Um, I don't know about that. No, no, no. Let, give us your, the rundown of the game. How do you feel like I played? How do you feel like the team played? How did we come out? Um, obviously, it was a big matchup. Mm-hmm. The New York Giants, or not Giants, <laughs> New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers coming back. First game back. Yeah. What do you think? I know that everyone was kind of talking about, oh, like, is Aaron going to have, like, you know, mesh with this team? He's been out for X long. Not this, you know, like, no, no, no. Go, baby, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm like, wow, I'm already surprised. Go ahead. Keep going. Oh, my God. So he's, um, you just made me, like, lose my <laughs> vibe. <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. Keep going. Keep going. Do you want me to talk about it or no? Of course I do. Okay. So he, what am I saying? Okay, so I was wondering if he was gonna like mesh with this team because he's been hurt and he's had to come back for a big injury and da 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 da. What's mm-hmm. he gonna do? How's this gonna go with this team? Um, and then you know, like I don't know. I haven't. Do you wanna continue? Are you good? <laughs> You're doing a great job, money. Yeah. We're all we're all listening to you. And so, and then on your guys' end, I knew like some people like we're not gonna be playing, and then we have like new guys older guys how's everyone going to mesh together this year after you know what happened at Vegas and da 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 so I don't know <laughs> so overall how do you how do you think after the game uh, watching us I mean great you went like great, great yeah. okay good uh, we used to like you know talk about like you know players of the game and stuff like was there somebody that like popped off the field to you but you know you don't have to you don't say me just because you well, want to. How about you walk through your game experience and then I'll, I'll look into our offensive and defensive players. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was great. I think, uh, you know, it was, it was great to be back out there. You know, you never know where you're, t- where you're at as a team until you until you get out there and you, you let it you let it spin. Um, I felt like, uh, you know, it starts from the moment you wake up in the morning, what you put on, what you wear. Mm-hmm. How would you feel about your outfit for the game? I felt really good about it. I thought you looked great. Thank you. You're welcome. I think especially being like, you know, six months postpartum, mm-hmm. like you think you over common, you think a lot about your image and mm-hmm. your body and all the things and mm-hmm. it's hard. So I was like, you know, I think I just look at myself a little different these days. But, you know, that is what it is. But no, I felt good and I felt confident. And that's the most important is feeling confident. There you go. Um, when you walk out the door and I felt great. How'd you feel? I felt amazing. You know, I you know I had my little deal with Abercrombie and Abercrombie. they uh, and they uh, they got some outstanding fits. Um, and uh, you know, I wore one of their outfits for the game, and I felt great in it. You love Abercrombie. Listen to me. No one on the face of the earth likes Abercrombie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, of course. Go ahead, yeah, blow them up. If you're blow in the Valley Fair area, you could visit your local Abercrombie. Wow, and see Mr. Fred Warner. All over the walls. Oh, thank you. Honey. All over the walls. Yeah, no, they're they're. Or if you're driving uh, down the street, I'm actually wearing. I remember right Abercrombie now. Fit. Yeah, full app, wow. full fit. Um, you know, this wasn't planned at all. Uh, this is not Abercrombie <laughs> ad by any means. Unfortunately, but, it's not. But you know, yeah, no, their their quality is unmatched. Um, they got good stuff. Also, I want to touch just because I'm thinking about it. Go ahead. If, just it, touch if anyone's it. like driving, please comment down below in like our oh. comments if you've seen the Fred's. Um, what's the law firm? Venardi and Zorada. Bernardi and Zarada, I'm sure if you're a local of the Bay Area, you have seen Mr. Fred Warner plastered on the his beautiful face on some billboards. So if you've seen those, please let us know because that's so funny. Like we were driving on the street the other day and we saw one and I was like, that's my husband. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so dear. funny. Um, but no, I think the game was amazing. We had such a good time. <clears throat> Monday Night Football, primetime television. Like, can you get any more excited? Like, Amazing. I could feel your energy. Everyone, I mean, you were going crazy. As soon as you got on the field, you were just like a like a missile. You were just going nuts. Um, and I could just tell you were really excited to Absolutely. be there. Absolutely. Uh, as you can tell from my pregame speech that we all uh, yeah, were, talked about it earlier. Yeah, started from there. <laughs> what a, I mean, we, we had talked about bringing, you know, a little baby bow. But uh, no, no, I'm very, I listen, seven to seven is a blessing and mm -hmm. I'm just not, I just, he's too little right now to enjoy things like that. Mm. I know that he's overwhelming. It's very overwhelming. It's thousands of people. It's extremely loud in Levi Stadium. So I know I took him to the preseason game um, and I kind of gauged off of that where he did not have the best time he had a pretty uh bad few hours after that because we were off schedule and you know right now with him being six months schedule is very important for him he thrives to be 
being on a schedule mm -hmm. and he's best and he's, you know, he's just his best self when he's on his schedule. So I don't want to break that up right now. I possibly might bring him to the day games mm -hmm. um, just for like half of them. Uh, but there will be no night games for Bo Warner this season. Mm -hmm. Next year, it'll be a whole different ball game. He'll mm -hmm. be over one years old and mm -hmm. he'll be able to hang. But right now, he's just he's just a little baby. He's a little baby. He can't handle it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. But I'll I'll enjoy the moment where I can have my son at the game with me. And it's coming. It's coming? It's coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, It was good to see. I mean, I had a bunch of people I didn't realize. I mean, I kind of did realize, but it was kind of crazy after the fact, like seeing all the homies that I have over with the Jets. Mm -hmm. Of course, pregame, you know, we're not we're not shaking hands. We're not buddy buddy in pregame, you know, because it's, you know, business as usual. Yeah. But then after the game, you see you see your guys, you know, I see Coach Sala, you know, and have that uh, you know, I hadn't seen him in so long. It was cool to just, you know, just embrace and and be and, you know, see him again. And uh my guys, DJ Reed, you know what I'm saying? We came in together twenty eighteen He's balling. Solomon Thomas. Solly. You know, you know, these are these are all guys that are just like like act like Javon Kinlaw. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like these are these are brothers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it was good to see them. Um, you know, and a bunch of other people too. You know, I, I keep going down the line, but um it was good to talk to Aaron too after the game. You know, I just got such a genuine respect for him. As and, he does for you, I think. Yeah, it's mutual. And um yeah, just I, I I always appreciate him and you know the respect that he he gives me and, and all that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. happy he made it out. So it was a nice little. Yeah, you saw a lot of people you knew, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. And you said you got a lot of. You don't have to say who, but like you got a lot of people texting after the game, just like with like good praise and how excited they were to see you. You know, doing so well again at the start of the season. Yeah, you know it's it's just good to go out and make plays. Mm -hmm. People see it and they acknowledge it and it feels good you know i i uh, got a busted up knuckle here from that little punch out i had someone said in my tiktok comments they were like did you this is what i said that they saw a clip of you saying like that was for my son did you say that <laughs> <laughs> what? wait what what are you talking someone about said, on the tiktok in my comments like in my comments on my social media they were like i saw like brad get that first fumble and like there's a clip of like after where you said that was that's for my son or that's on my son or something did you say that on my son <laughs> hey that's kind of hard i should say that next time so you um didn't. no i didn't say any of that okay no 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 but you know i i always keep i always keep my wife and my son on my wrist tape yeah you know well, people they they're gonna see little writing on my wrist tape and they're like what the heck is that keep my my wife's initials my son's initials and then best in the world i love that mm -hmm. um did you think do you feel like this season like in general you're gonna like, anything's different like with like the when you go out there and play like now that you do have a son do you is it at all different than the fire in your belly you had before i don't know i feel like i mean the fire is is there and it's burning bright even so he doesn't though, bring anything additional to your. Of course he does. Okay. But like on game day, am I thinking about my son? You should be. I'm thinking about everything, but like yeah. I mean, it, at the end of the day, I'm thinking about. I want to try to. I don't want to, I'm not gonna say the word murder as a little as a little over the top, but I'm trying to really like embarrass you. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's the mindset. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, saying like drive. I'm not saying like oh, yeah, my drive. Like, that that's yeah. what gets me up in the morning. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like that's what I you know what keeps me going and day in and day out. But I thought you were talking about just like on game day, no, like no. my thinking about my son on, on you know on game day. Oh, okay, you're going a little literal with it. I was just saying like your is your drive different at all from having like of course being a father now. One thousand percent. Yeah, I got the dad strength. <laughs> I mean, you know, some guys they get into year seven, and they've you know gotten a little little taste of the you know the accolades and all that and they start to kind of chill out a little bit it's opposite for me yeah gotta turn it up i've never i've never gotten enough love that okay well i guess since we were going to talk about the offensive and defensive play of the game and then let's do like your rose and your thorn so my offensive player of the game was jordan mason oh hands down mm-hmm obsessed with him but mm. i've always thought he was like that guy before like whenever he came in when did he come in what year did he come in uh i think, I think this is year three or four okay for him. i feel like 
three. And, and this is your three for him. Yeah. So he has always had like a little sprinkle and like you've seen it. You've told me about it. I've seen it like during training camps. I'm like, he is so good. Whenever they would, you know, bring him in the games and stuff. I'm just like, this kid's nuts. And like, I feel like it was such a good opportunity. Unfortunately, um, Christian McCaffrey was out this game, but I feel like that also gives people like Jordan Mason the opportunity to like shine their light. And he mm. is just incredible to me. Love. Yeah, no, he had a great game. I'm not surprised he's been running like that all training camp, all preseason. He was he was running hard in, in training during uh off season when he was with us. You know, I I give the funny story about how I was uh I had him sprawled out on that turf during during our training sessions <laughs> cuz uh you know, he was trying to keep up. Yeah. And uh, obviously it paid off, you know, those hard training sessions. Um and then my defensive player of the game was probably Fred Warner. <laughs> Not only because I love you, but because you freaking killed it, babe. Like you did Thank so, you, honey. so, so good. Thank you. So proud of you. Thank you, honey. Um, offensive, defensive. Yeah, I mean, I think offensively, obviously, easy answer is, is uh, Mr. JP Mason. Uh, let's give a uh, not easy answer. Let's give a let's give a a shout out to you know Mr. Mr. Puni. Okay. You know our our new starting. I believe he plays right guard. You know the guard positions they get a little hairy, but. Uh, Pooney, man, I've been obviously talking about how great he's been as a rookie and to have his first start. And from what it, from the looks of it, it sounds like he did a great job uh, in his first start uh, in a primetime game. So happy for him, his success. He's only going to continue to get better. And then defensively, how about we give a shout out to Flanagan Fowles? Oh, absolutely. Man, first interception of his career Yeah, out there, man coverage, turns and runs. Oh, there it is. Amazing. Yeah. I love being able to see him after the game too, and just give him just a hug. so happy. Yeah, love. just grinning ear to ear. He's, he comes into work today. He's like, he's happy. <laughs> yeah, he was. I love that. Mm -hmm. Good for him. So proud of him. Always love to see him mm -hmm. be successful. Mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah. Any other other takeaways from this game, or you just want to like let it be? Like, no. I mean, there's things that you can always clean up either within, if you even if it's a win or a loss, you know. But I'm um, I'm completely past that game. That was that's that's last. That's last week's news. Mm -hmm. We're on to the next We're headed Minnesota, off. You're Minnesota Vikings. Me. You're headed off to Minnesota mm -hmm. this week. I will not be in attendance um, because I've got a son, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and he has a he has a mm -hmm. okay, okay. Mm -hmm. he has a strict bedtime. So I'm excited to watch you um, over in Minnesota. That's right. Now we we do have to talk about to the people because obviously it's not always 20 football 24 7 no it's not no it's not or i would we got yeah you know we got to keep we got to obviously keep the the marriage uh alive and yeah. well and we do that by having our our weekly date night yeah you know every friday <laughs> however you know when it's a short week like this things get a little hairy with I the know. with the friday date night it'll so it's like it'll have to be a thursday it'll have to be a thursday yes okay well you you heard it here first, folks. Thursday date night. Our last no, that's just special because like this week's different. You're heading out. You're exactly. Be gone for two weeks. Mm -hmm. They're not gone straight, but they're going to be there's two away games next up. Next time we'll be at Levi's. Will be like the end of this month. Um, but uh, we are going to do. What was the last date night we went? We went. Did we go to Tamarin in Palo Alto? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Recommend it 10 out of 10 for any of you guys mm -hmm. listening locally. Tamarin and Palo Alto is amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we went to with we took the baby to dinner. It wasn't date night, but we took him with us. Luna. To Luna Mexican Kitchen in Campbell. And that place is also really good. Mm -hmm. So next this Thursday, we'll have to try something different, just you and I. Mm -hmm. Um, to, you know, love on each other and just be very couple. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's look ahead to the Minnesota Vikings. How do you feel about traveling? <laughs> I think uh, obviously short week, playing on Monday and having to go across country. You know, multiple time zones. We usually leave two days ahead. It's a quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. So, in my mind, what do I think about as the most important piece of the puzzle? Mm -hmm. What would you say? If you had to guess. Sleep. Boom. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep is number one. Uh, you know, in order for, for the body to recover, you got to get that sleep in. So 
um, that's that's really my You're main running focus. Running a little low on that right now. Huh? Running very low. <laughs> How much time do we have on the pod? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, as soon as the podcast ends, then I'm gonna go ahead and go right to bed. Uh, and all week, I'm just gonna be trying to bank up those hours of sleep, so ultimately I can be out there flying around now, just like just as I did Monday night. Yeah, you got enough sleep for Monday night. You're gonna be great. <laughs> You're gonna be great, honey. And we're gonna be watching Thanks. you from the house, just cheering you on, screaming. And Bo, like, yeah. he's gonna put him in an outfit. It's gonna be great. Okay, good. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is a, another tough opponent for us, Minnesota Vikings. They obviously are coming off a huge win on the road against the Giants. Um, Sammy Darnold, our guy, was with us last year, and he's their starting quarterback now. Uh, they got obviously one of the best playmakers, wide receivers in the league, Justin Jefferson. That is gonna be a huge point of emphasis for us defensively to try to stop him. So. Yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good little battle for us. I'm excited about it. I was getting a, really nervous for this Monday night game. I just had a lot of you know like nervous energy about you getting out there again. But like I said, as soon as you sh- came out there, you were just hot, and I was like, okay, like I can relax. Like we're good, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool. I think that happens a lot. Whenever the first time you make a a really big play, like I can I like release, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> we're good. Like we're good. The rest of the game, we're fine. All mm-hmm. we gotta do is make sure you stay healthy the rest of the game, and we're mm-hmm. good. So. I think going away, obviously, we hate being away from you. We hate when you have to leave us. But um, I don't, you know. There's not much to worry about. There's really not. Because you know I'm just going to handle business. Exactly. It's like a work trip. You come back, you handle business, and um, and we're on to the next. Health is a horse. Yeah. We don't really really worry about that kind of stuff over here. (laughs) That's right. Okay. Well, I think that's all. For tonight, you guys, thank you guys so much for listening. We're so excited to be back. Season two of the Warner House. Wow. Um, please like like everything like last season, like, share, comment, do all the things, and then listen to wherever you get your podcast. And we will be back next week. Bye guys. Bye.